There's so much going on in the world and maybe you're losing hope in seeing a future filled with hope. But when you put your hope in Jesus, you can and will see the hope that he has for you. I'm inviting my dear friend and sister in Christ, Tina Wanamaker. She's back and we're going to be discussing the hope in Jesus Christ. Hi, Tina. I'm so happy you're here. Hi, Nancy. Thanks for having me. Why should we have hope in God? The scripture is pretty clear that Jesus is our hope. And the word for hope, actually, if we, I like to kind of break it down. So we're going to do that a little here. In the Greek, it's the word elpis, and it means confidence or expectation in God. So the idea is that we have a confidence in God, that we, our expectation is from Him, that we're relying on Him. So why should we have hope or confidence in God? Because He's trustworthy. You know, he's faithful. He doesn't ever change. And the world is constantly changing. And our circumstances are constantly changing. And there's insecurity left and right. And so our hope should only be in the unchanging God and Father. I love that. I love that. You know, it's so hard not to see the hope in Jesus, right? and and how he can just bring us through and so how does having hope in god change your actions and outlook that's a great question nancy you know i was looking in uh, romans chapter 8 i'm going to read you just a couple of verses here romans 8 verse 18 for i consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. And as we move down in verse 24, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? So, how does it change us? How does it change our perspective or the way that we act? I think if we have an understanding of the hope that we have in Christ or the expectation that we have in Christ, we know where we're going, that our citizenship is in heaven, that we ourselves along with creation are groaning, you know, that we want to be further clothed in Christ as Paul puts it. You know, he's like, I, it's not that I don't want to be here, but I want to be further clothed in Christ. And that's the expectation that we have in God. So how does that change how we look at things? Well, golly, then we can begin right here in Romans 8 and, and say, I consider that the sufferings of this present age, they're nothing. They're a light affliction for us. Although sometimes they don't feel like a light affliction. And that's where our perspective shift comes in when we're realizing that our hope or our confidence is in God and not in ourselves, not in what I can do to change a situation, not in how I can, you know, think of something differently or react or respond, but simply in Christ alone. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing, you know, people are looking at what they can do or what the world can do for them. And, and it's, it's very sad that some people just do lose their hope and um, because they've put their confidence in, say, maybe a president or say, maybe, you know, somebody that's leading, you know, and, and that's when that person, man will always let you down, but God will never let you down. He's always there. He's always present. So how can we strengthen our hope in him? We're, we're kind of saying, if we look at the definition of hope again, how can I strengthen my confidence in God? Well, I think there's a couple of things we can do. Number one, we can choose to trust him, right? We can choose to trust God in our situation. And sometimes that can feel a little scary. I was talking with a gal yesterday and, you know, she was saying, sometimes it feels scary to trust God because she doesn't know the outcome. She doesn't know, am I going to lose something? Am I going to gain something? What's going to happen? 
And in that place, you know, we can strengthen our confidence in God by choosing to trust him. Even if we don't know the outcome, we don't have to have an understanding, a fullness of understanding of the situation, or even to have an understanding of what the outcome could be in order to choose to trust him. And the more that we choose to trust him, the more that we're choosing hope or confidence in him. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in Psalm 33, 20, it says, we wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. So how can we have hope in God, but still have doubt? I think that uncertainty is probably par for the course in life. Uh, there's a lot of uncertain places. You know, we, we talked a little bit about insecure places, right? Those places that don't feel sturdy for us to stand on. But golly, if we look at it across the board, that can be everything right now. It could be our job. It could be this house that I'm sitting in. It could be, you know, our health, so many things. And so how can we choose to trust God? How can we choose to have hope in the places where it feels uncertain while well, we just do it by faith. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what we do is we just, again, it's a choice. We can't choose to worry and to trust at the same time. We can't choose to rely on ourselves and rely on God at the same time. It won't work. I think maybe we've all tried it to a degree and we can both say, Nancy, it doesn't work. <laughs> we got to choose one or the other. Yeah. How does hope in God lead us into actions and decisions? You know, like we're doing stuff based on our emotions a lot of times, right? So how do we take it away from ourselves and, you know, gravitate it to God and let him take it? Um, I think we can just think of it as, okay, so we have, when we have, chickens out here on the farm. So we've got, when Ira and I, our 12 year old boy, we were sorting eggs yesterday and we're putting the good eggs, we're testing the eggs, putting the good eggs in one basket and we're putting the bad eggs in another basket. And so we're gonna, we're gonna get rid of the bad ones and keep the good ones. So it kind of makes me think of, we've got two baskets, you know, we've got a reliance upon Christ or confidence in Christ or a place of hope in Christ. And then we've got another basket, which is a reliance upon self or hope in a situation or government entity or, or whatever that looks like. So the question is, um, which basket are we going to put our eggs in? <laughs> you know, uh, which one are we going to choose to place ourselves in ultimately? And if I choose to put my eggs in the basket of hope in Christ, where I'm choosing not to rely on myself. I'm choosing to rely on Christ. In essence, what I'm doing is I'm saying, God, you're the potter and I'm the clay. You get to mold me and make me into whatever you desire. But if I'm putting myself in the other basket or putting my eggs in the other basket, where I'm relying on myself, in essence, I'm like the, the clay that's saying, why are you doing this, Lord Potter? Why are you doing this to me? Why am I in this situation? Why, right? And I'm relying on myself for my own understanding. And scripture says, don't do that. Don't rely on your own. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't do that. We're to rely and trust on God. We're to look to him for our hope. We're to put our eggs in that basket. And the result of that, the resulting action is, um, or we might say, what what are the what's the fruit of that uh, of us doing that? It's going to be peace, going to be joy, it's going to be trust, it's going to be you know. And when we're talking about peace, we're talking about the kind of peace that's supernatural, that's outside of us entirely, that that the world looks at us in a situation and says there shouldn't be peace there, but there is what's going on, right? So we look so different. And so there's fruit that comes forth from hoping in God. Then there's also fruit that comes forth from hoping in ourselves or our situation to change or whatever that is. 
And that kind of fruit isn't good. That's where we get worked up in ourselves and worried and anxious and we're trained to figure it all out. We don't want that. Mm -hmm. I love the way that you use that, those pictures, the mental pictures of, of, you know, good and bad eggs and, and the things that you're showing us here and showing that the audience, that's why I always have you on Tina, because you always show people exactly, you know, the visual of, of all the things that God wants for us. And, and I, that's why I love having you on. Um, so how can people uh, find out about you and what have you been up to lately? So if they want further information or if they want to reach out, if they have a prayer request, go to tinawanamaker.com and they can email me there. Uh, there are, are some free teaching videos and audio and different things on there that they can uh, resources that they can find there. And as to what I've been up to lately, we're doing some work in our local valley in Washington state. Uh, and so locally and within our community, I'm in the jail. I'm in, uh, down at the local union gospel mission. Um, just talking, honestly, we've just been talking with some people on the street too and trying to share Christ, you know, bring that hope. Hey, rely on Christ, right? Hey, let's stop and let's have that conversation, you know, and let's talk about these things. And then um, statewide also, we're, we're doing some things. We've got a, a Washington State Conference coming up for women. It's called Focus Women's Conference. And the goal is to stand in a place of unity in Christ uh, and link arms and focus on Jesus and Jesus alone. We call it kind of a no-name conference, except for the name of Jesus. Right. And that's what we want. And then also internationally, um, I work with an organization called French Church International um, and I work with women and I do women's discipleship, mentorship, leadership uh, things. And so it's it's incredible to see even globally. I think it's so incredible to be able to see community state wise, U.S. wise globally what christ is doing it's so incredible so what would you like to leave my audience with today there was a dear sister in christ and she has four children who have been chronically ill uh, for the last four years actually and she has been feeling very discouraged and very um overwhelmed by in in caring for the children and uh, the lack of really care for herself that she hasn't had any time. And uh, they have to be very limited because the children are immunocompromised. And so they can only go certain places at certain times. So they came out, uh, I think it was last week, and her kids don't have a lot of opportunity just to be kids. So they came out here to the farm and we sat under the willow trees and watched the kids play. And we discussed this section of scripture that, that we had talked a little bit about Romans 8. And we talked about the hope that's coming. We talked about the expectation that we have in Christ for what is to come. And we watched her kids play with, with our kids and just run and be kids and be free. And it just gave us this vision for what's to come, you know, like this, she was talking a lot about the things that they've experienced that have really caused them to recognize the groaning within themselves for the hope that is to come. And the conversation really impacted me. You know, I was like, Jesus, I mean, look at these kids and look at the situation and she still has hope, you know, she's still placing her confidence in Christ even though it's been so hard for them. And so to sit there and to be able to pray with them and to listen and to have this discussion, it just was like this vision of what is to come, that of that hope that we have in Christ. And it gave her that hope that day too, to see her kids playing and being kids and making willow crowns and digging holes and doing those kind of things. You know, King David could have lost hope 
but instead praise God in the midst of his battles. And he says in Psalm 42, 5, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. And Psalm 62, 5 says, yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. And Paul the Apostle tells us in Romans 12, 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And in Romans 15, 4, he says, for everything was written in the past, was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. You know, hope can only be found in one place, And that is in the Lord Jesus Christ, who loves you with an everlasting love and fills you with hope that is eternally yours. Do you listen to the call of God? Because God speaks to you every day. Are you listening to the call? Yeah.